Namaste. Welcome back to an another video. In the previous video, we studied about pollination and uh, types. In this video, we will study about how that pollination is brought about. That pollination is brought about by some agents and we call them agents of pollination. So all those agents of pollination have been categorized into two. They are abiotic agents and biotic agents. The abiotic agents, okay, where already we know A stands for, okay, no, and biotic stands for life. So these are the one, okay, who do not have life and that they are the one who will carry pollen grains from one plant to and another plant or from one flower to another flower. In the case of biotic agents, there are animals who will carry the pollen grains from one plant to another plant or from one flower to another flower. Right. So out of these two uh, types of agents, okay, uh, right, the majority of plants will use biotic agents. Whereas only a small portion of plants will use abiotic agents okay and among them okay the most common is this uh, wind okay pollination so this is the most common okay among and that too it is very common among grasses and very common among grasses okay so out of the okay wind and water abiotic agents it is the wind that is very common when you compare with water and in case of grasses the wind pollination is a very very okay common type <coughs> right now we need to keep a point in the mind so in the wind and water pollinator pollination the pollen grains coming in contact with the stigma is a chance factor right as the pollen grains are released into the air right or into the water whether they reach the destination is a question mark so that is uh, right that is a, a chance factor okay and uh, because of this it has to produce a lot of pollen grains so if it produces a very less number of pollen grains then there is a uh, less chance of those pollen grains reaching the destination that is an another flower present okay so uh, that is an another flower right so because of this uh, of this uncertainties okay and pollen loss the flowers produce an enormous amount of pollen grains okay so that is uh, how uh, right in, in the case of wind and water pollinating uh, plants so a lot of pollen grains have to be produced okay so to compensate the loss now <clears throat> out of these two we will see the abiotic agents uh, that is a wind pollination so among this wind pollination okay uh, if that pollination takes place by wind then it is called animophily it's called animophily so where from the greek the word has been taken from greek animos which means wind and here these plants pollinated by wind, the pollen, uh, the plants pollinated by wind are called, okay, animophilous plants. They are called animophilous plants, and these animophilous plants, okay, have some, okay, characters. They produce some, uh, 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 the special character. I mean, the special characters seen in the case of flowers. So that's what the characters of wind pollinated plants. So there is a special. Uh, uh, you know adaptation seen in the case of those uh, flowers okay uh, because uh, they will be pollinated by the wind okay so let's see those uh, characters of the flowers okay here so characters of wind pollinated plants especially in case here i'm talking okay or i will mention here uh, wind pollinated okay flowers <coughs> characters of wind pollinated flowers here okay so now <clears throat> the pollen grains are small in size okay 
uh, because they have to be carried by wind their size has to be very small if they are larger they cannot be carried by the wind so easily okay and they should be very light okay and they should be smooth and they should be definitely non sticky if they are sticky then they will get attached to some other okay substrates and so and so and will not be able to move free and they should be powdery and mostly in all those they are powdered for easy dispersal by wind currents so that's uh, one character you will see in the flowers pollinated by wind and another one where flowers do not produce scent or nectar because uh, there is no need of uh, attracting uh, any biotic agent in the case here they are not attracting biotic agent so that the wind cannot okay, smell or cannot see the color there is no need to produce scent or nectar then the calyx and corolla okay so are highly reduced or maybe absent in case of some species okay and then they often possess well exposed stamens the stamens will be well exposed into the air okay so that the pollen grains can be easily dispersed by the wind currents and again the anthers have versatile attachment so versatile attachment which means okay so this is an anther so the anther is attached to filament so there are uh, a, right half a dozen types of attachment of filament with the anther and one okay type is this versatile okay type of attachment so this is anther okay so this versatile attachment okay so the filament is attached to this anther at the middle so that the anther has a okay uh, free movement so the anther can move okay freely okay from the center point here because of that it can easily release the pollen grains into air so that's what the anthers have versatile attachment so that they can easily swing and liberate pollen grains then they often have single ovule in each ovary okay and the numerous flowers will be obviously packed so most of these wind pollinated plants will be producing something called inflorescences let's see uh, the example of that corn cough okay tassel so we may see uh, in case of this uh, then this is uh, you will see in case of maize okay and in case of maize whenever you see okay so uh, you will find a lot of uh, okay long uh, silky hair like okay structures you will find here and these are all actually the styles okay at the base of this there is a ovary okay and uh, on the tip you will find the stigma here so you will find so all these this is a uh, stigma here at the base of this you will find ovary so this is a uh, right on cough that and uh, so these uh, styles are so long that they are adapted to trap wind-borne pollen grains okay so here the styles are long and are of course that is a adaptation here okay so that is they are adapted to trap okay wind born pollen so the pollen grains will be of course uh, in case of wind pollination they are released into the wind and the wind will be carrying these pollen grains and to okay uh, right uh, pick those uh, pollen grains present in the uh, in the wind these uh, styles have to be very long with a uh, sticky stigma okay at their tips uh, that's what we see in the case of uh, corn cob as an example okay for this uh, uh, right uh, wind pollinating uh, plants here okay the next one right and another point that flowers are born on long stems the flowers are born on uh, long stems okay so and uh, well 
raised <coughs> means so the long stems will help them to uh, be exposed into the air okay so that's what well raised here the flowers are born on okay long stems and well raised this uh, you will see in case of uh, sugar cane in sugar canes you will find such type of uh, okay uh, right uh, inflorescences and then right the and another point pollen grains are produced in are produced in abundance the pollen grains are produced in okay abundance okay so this is to compensate okay the loss so this is to compensate the okay loss so that's what uh, uh, okay so as i mean uh, most of the pollen grains obviously will never i mean uh, they may not reach the destination there, there should be more number of pollen grains produced so that increases the chance of the pollen grains to reach uh, uh, their destiny okay uh, right so you see this uh, when pollination okay uh, in what plants the wind pollination is uh, very common here okay so the wind pollination is very common in of course sugar cane okay grasses which i have already mentioned so it is seen in the case of uh, okay uh, grasses then uh, bamboos so in them also the pollination it will be by okay uh, wind and then okay millets okay and here already which i have mentioned okay maize in maize also it will be by uh, wind pollination okay then paddy uh, etc in all this uh, wind pollination the pollination takes place by wind so that's all about okay the abiotic agent wind pollination so the next one uh, we will study about water pollination